Hey gang, old Bit Collector here. I want to talk to you a little bit about the propeller powered universal micro SD module. Um, this is a product that we've recently added to inventory and it provides compatibility with both the parallax version of the micro SD adapter as well as the gadget gangster version of the micro SD adapter. This is a kit and it does have a surface mount part and that sometimes the words surface mount tend to scare people just a little bit. You don't have to be frightened of this one. This is a very easy surface mount kit to build that you can build on your desk. I'm going to use just a minimal tools here today uh, using my soldering iron and just my desk and the materials that came with the kit. Some things that you'll want to pay attention to before assembling this kit. You should get four pieces in the, in the parts bag for the Universal Micro SD Kit. First of all is the surface mount Micro SD slot. That's this part right here. You should also get this resistor pack. And you'll want to pay very close attention. Look at it carefully because at one end of the resistor pack you'll see a little triangle. That designates the orientation of this resistor pack. You don't want to put it in backwards or this won't work properly. So I've found the triangle on this resistor pack and it's going to go into the square pin here on the micro SD adapter. Now I've already cut down my straight pin header to the size that I need for the PX side of the pocket mini computer or parallax adapter. Really all that you need is just the two and then the four for the pocket mini computer but I've added the two extra holes in the middle so it's easy enough just to break it all off as one piece measure it out eight pins and it'll go right in. The back side has the combination for of two one space pin and then four for the gadget gangster products so if you're getting the uh, quick player or you have the quick player extreme you can build this board and it's also compatible. I've also found that it's just easy and there's enough of the pin headers included in the kit you can actually build this for both. So let's get into building this shall we? I want to show you how easy it is to assemble this micro SD adapter piece on your universal micro SD kit. Now I could use a vise if you have something like a little desk vise or a panavise or a panavise junior that's a handy thing to have but not everybody has one of those so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and assemble this using my desk spot here and some tape. So the first thing I'll do is get the board itself positioned about where I want to solder and I'm going to place the micro SD adapter and what I want to do is I want to line up the little pins and yes there's plenty of room it's very forgiving with the spot on the board and that looks just about perfect right there you can uh, just kind of take your time and to you're comfortable with how it's lining up give it a little nudge here right and left until I until I'm happy that it's centered as closely as I can on the pins. Once you've got that what you can do is just take a piece of tape I'm going to use some painters tape here but you could use a piece of black tape, black vinyl tape also works just fine for this and I'm going to tape that micro SD adapter down to the board. As I do this it's shifting and it's alright I'm just going to shift it back before I stick the tape It's wanting to get away here. Let's just give it a little nudge. I'm going to do this live in one take. That's how easy this little adapter kit is to put together. So, okay, I've got it lined up. And now what I'm going to do is just take the painter's tape and I'm just going to overdo it and just sort of stick the whole board down to my desk area here. So, again, if you don't have one of those great vices, um, you don't really need one to do this kit. You can just tape the whole board right to your desk with a piece of black tape or painter's tape like I've done here or masking tape so that it doesn't shift around on you while you're assembling. And I'm just going to add just a little more here on one side. You know what? Overkill is a great thing sometimes. We'll just put a little more here. This board cannot shift around. So I've already got my soldering pencil warmed up here. And let's get it around and see if I can get it out of the way of the camera. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start at the first pin and get the solder in there. The solder really only wants to stick to the pad. That's the really neat thing about this project. Even though they are very close together, um, the spaces, the solder doesn't want to go there. So as, as long as you don't get too much solder, you won't get a join. Now, I've just got a join between two of the pins. In other words, I've got too much solder. And what you can do is you can, you can do this. You can pull it away. That's one technique you can use. Or you'll want to have a little solder braid on hand. And just go ahead and suck up the extra solder into the braid until you get down to just what you need. Don't need very much on the pins. There we go. And the braid is slowly, I just need to heat it up a little more. There it goes. Now I've got those two separated and I've got a third one involved here. And again, I'm just going to get the braid in. Just heat up the braid. It'll take a moment or two with your soldering pencil. And just sort of pull out the extra. Like that. You just sort of, there we go. And the first three pins are soldered in, no problem. And we don't have any connections. You might want to get an eye loop out if you've got a, or a magnifying glass when you're done so that you can just check your work. Let's see if we can do the next ones here. Oh, those are just beautiful. And those look pretty good. Obviously, the, the challenging part is first. Let's get rid of my excess solder here. Clean my tip. And again, I'm not using any special tools here. I'm just using the standard desktop. Oh, there's a couple pins there that want to tie together. We'll just get the braid back in on them. And clean them up. Heat that up a little bit. Let it absorb the extra into the braid. Beautiful. That looks like it's soldered onto the board. Now I'm going to want to inspect that with an eye loop um, before I give it the total pass, but that looks like what I'm expecting to see. Now I'm going to give it a little on the corner here. Get a little solder there. These, these corner positions are just there to hold, to add some stability to the socket so it doesn't want to shift around on you, hopefully. And I'm getting in the way of my own camera here, so I'm going to move this a little bit. There we go. At this point, I'm ready to pull the tape off and deal with the easy through-hole connections. And then uh, there's also some, some points on the back of the socket that I can also get to give it just a little more stability. Um, but what I want to do is kind of give a little close-up look here, make sure that all my connections are fine. They look great. There's, uh, it's ready to take a card. So now the next step of this is going to be putting in the through-hole resistor. I would do that next. Again, you want to find the little triangle and line it up on the square hole toward the front of the board. To the front is where the card goes in or the, where my OBC stamp is. And then once you've got that soldered into place, you don't even need to cut it off. Don't worry about it. It's not, it doesn't go deep enough to be a problem. Let me see if I can get this back in focus. These legs are not an issue. So you can just leave those uncut. The last step, of course, is take your pin header. And I'm going to push it through and then put it back into focus here on the camera. So that the completed board will look something like this right here when you're done. This is an easy project. You should be able to assemble this in about 10 to 20 minutes, uh, depending on your soldering skills. I kind of made a mess of this when I've got some flux. We can take a little alcohol and clean that up so it looks good. Again, the other thing that you can do too is because there's some extra pin headers, you can go ahead and measure and insert the ones for the Gadget Gangster board if you have that board. Uh, and then you'll have an adapter that is easily compatible with both the propeller-powered Quick Start module adapters uh, or add-ons and the gadget gangster like the quick player add-on. You can plug into either board with this and the pins don't get in the way.
So there's an easy project. Um, whether you're dealing with a breadboard for the propeller or you're dealing with a quick player or you're building this for your pocket mini computer, this is a quick and easy assemble.